Events to Win It Podcast. I'm Jason Gilbo, J. Gilbo 11, breaking down today's Wednesday NBA slate. And uh, it's looking like a decent one. Uh, if you look through the games, I mean, it's not a lot of attractive options um, as far as, you know, the ones that stand out to you. But, I mean, if you look at the totals, I mean, each game's over 200 tonight, so that's nice to see. There are some blowout concerns. Uh, we're still waiting on Sacramento and San Antonio. I think just the Kawhi news is holding back the, the spread and totals there, but expect that one to be over 200 as well. Uh, if Kawhi plays, the Spurs will obviously be likely double-digit favorites. So, um, And there are quite a few tonight. So looking at Toronto and Minnesota, love the game there. Uh, 212 game total, and it, the, the Raptors are favored by 9.5 points. There is some blowout concern there. Um, you're looking at the Clippers and Nuggets, 10.5 point spread. Pistons and 76ers, 11 point. Got Philly coming off the back-to-back there. So um, also three games with an eight-point spread, uh, the Memphis-LA game, Cleveland-Charlotte, and Indiana-New York, um, all all eight or eight-and-a-half point spreads, and they could kind of swing either way. So you're banking on those to stay close. Um, also Dallas-OKC, big 214 total, Golden State-Miami. Um, so definitely all in consideration tonight. I like all the teams here. Um, there are probably a few I'm staying away from just due to tougher matchups. Uh, not a big fan of the Sixers tonight against the, the Pistons. Obviously not a big fan of the Lakers, even though um, in Memphis is without Marcus Saul. Um, Charlotte Cleveland, I wasn't on that game last time, and it kind of hurt me because they were they able to keep that game close, and it was not a shorter slate. So that game is in play. Um, Indiana New York kind of features two of the small forwards uh, on tonight's slate. That could be a nice GPP move if you battle them up against each other. But... Um, I think overall, you're you're really looking at the Dallas OKC game, Washington, Chicago, Toronto, Minnesota, LA, Denver. Um, it's kind of your top options, and also grabbing some Pistons as well. So, um, it should be a fun slate. I don't think it's going to be quite as high scoring as as what you think it is, but uh, we'll see when when uh, the night finishes up. Uh, looking at point guards tonight, not a ton of injuries to deal with, which is nice. Um, you know, actually, everyone's healthy so far, so. That is good news. Uh, we can break down the top options. and um, Yes, Russell Westbrook and Steph Curry are there tonight, um, both priced over 10 k um, I mean, Westbrook, 11 grand on DK there. So um, I'm not really inclined with paying up for them tonight. Obviously, it would be more of a tournament move, if anything. Um, especially, I mean, OKC and, and Dallas hasn't been exactly a, a huge fancy production game from the Westbrook-Durant duo over the three games so far. Um, I mean, Westbrook has kind of averaged just a quiet 15, 8, and 6, which is moderately quiet for his standards. So just a shade over 43 points on average. Um, obviously, it's still Westbrook. Obviously, it's still a great matchup in play on the road there. But um, I really like the Chris Paul, John Wall, Kyle Lowry range. I think that's where I'm going to be heading tonight. So obviously, Chris Paul more of a, a blowout factor concern. Same with Lowry. Um but both are just such high usage guys. If there is a blowout, it's likely because they they dominated that game. Um, much like we saw at Lillard last night. If you were seeing any blowout concerns, it was because the backcourt did its job, and that was the case in Brooklyn, although did keep it close. I love Kyle Lowry tonight. Uh, he's one of my favorite plays. Um, often comes in overlooked. I mean, yes, there's many big names on this slate, but averaging 21, 5, and 6 over the last 10 games, uh, I mean, he's a big steals guy. He's not nearly to a game in that span as well. And Minnesota, just, you know, a nice high-paced game. Toronto 111 on the team total tonight, so that's a big one to target. Um, and you look at that backcourt, you just look at DeRozan and Lowry, the usage there. I mean, it's nearly 45 50% from, from what the team is. So um, I'm looking for a lot of production out of those two tonight, and I think they're in a great spot at home against Minnesota. So, um Really like Lowry. I like him in all formats, but I think he's going to be pretty overlooked in GPPs. Going down a bit cheaper, you obviously got to like uh, Derek Rose, Mike Conley in that range. Um, Derek Rose, he's been very consistent with Butler out. Still at a nice price tag. It is on the rise, so get him while you can before he kind of creeps into that range with all the other ones where you really got to start making some choices. But a whole matchup against Washington. Washington's played a fair amount of games over the last week or so, so they may take a little bit of a hit fatigue wise, um, but so Rose Rose and company should be able to to um, really surpass value tonight. So Mike Conley, uh, obviously a matchup against the Lakers is big, and Conley finally seeing like a little bit bigger minutes. He's taking a little bit bigger usage with Marcus Saul out, so you do like that. Um, 
you like the matchup against the LA. I mean, the last time these two played, uh, Conley went off for 40 fantasy points in just 24 minutes. Without Marcus Saul, with the Lakers playing better, uh, you could say you expect them to keep this game close. I like both sides of that game, actually, from a contrarian standpoint with the Lakers. Um, you know, looking at looking at that backcourt, uh, not really taking big targets, but I do like Randall down low. We'll talk about in a little bit. Moving down the list here, uh, Reggie Jackson taking a, a pretty significant price dump. I mean, it's just 67 uh, on DK there, and he is 68 on FanDuel. So, I mean, playing a matchup against Philly, there is blowout concern there, but at that price for his upside, been pretty consistent, um, especially over the last few games, 38, 46, and 28 DK points. Um does shoot the ball well at home, uh, much better than on the road, shooting 46% at home, 42% on the road, uh, averaging about six more fantasy points. Below 7K in this matchup, he's averaged 35 fantasy points over the two games against Philly this season. You can't argue for that price. So uh, I think price considered, I think he's a play in all formats, regardless of the blowout concerns. Um, if you're looking for more of a tournament play at that price, Ricky Rubio, surprisingly, went off against Boston, uh, one of the better backcourt defenses. You kind of expect him to play small ball with this three-guard situation on both sides, actually, so I think that's going to be the case again here. Um, if, you, if you're if playing planning on this game to, you know, to stay close, I think Rubio's a great play at 6,400, um, 37 and 40 DraftKings points in the last two games there against Boston and NY. Obviously, NY, anyone could put up 40 fantasy points, but um, against Boston, very, very surprising. So, um, his, his assist numbers have been stellar over the last few games, uh, 8, 16, 9, 8, 7 over the last five. So uh, I kind of expect that to continue, even though Lowry is a decent defender. But uh, at that price, I think he's a pretty solid tournament play. Looking any lower, uh, you're starting to kind of get a little bit risky. Deron Williams in a nice matchup, nice high total. OKC is not defended point guard as well this season. And Deron's put up decent numbers against OKC. Uh, 21, 5, and 4 on average in the two games, shooting 53% from the field. Um, Westbrook has been too concerned with playing defense this season. Obviously a fast-paced matchup against the Thunder at home. Um, Jerome Williams is definitely kind of in play, just kind of by default with that game, how it's going to play out anyway. Um, if Kawhi sits tonight, I do like Tony Parker um, at that price. 31 and 36 DK points in the last two games. Uh, he's taken on bigger shots, 18 and 16 shot attempts in that span. Um, you're looking at just a little more usage for, for Tony Parker with Kawhi out. Um, obviously, I mean, 20 points. He's, he did face two poor opponents, but he's also facing the Kings tonight. So you got to like that. You got to like the the possibility of put up another 30 fantasy point game, which would just be stellar at that, that price tag of 5,100. So he's kind of in play for me um, if, if you need to, Punt somewhere, but not quite punt because I don't think you're really looking any lower than that shooter at uh, point guard there. Moving over to shooting guard, uh, DeMar DeRozan, kind of your top option tonight. Um, with Wiggins shifting over to the three, I like the matchup a little bit more for him. Came off, he crushed Minnesota the last time they came out, uh, went 35, 4, and 3. So um, both these backcourt guys eat up tons of minutes, which I love um, the usage rates there. So if you're paying up, not a big fan of Clay Thompson. Um, yes, he has that huge upside, as we've seen recently, 42, 53, 30, 40. Also does have a lower floor than I want. I think he's just a GPP target. It's not the most ideal matchup for him, so I think it is, I'm going to tread very lightly uh, if I'm having a Clay Thompson tonight, which I don't really plan to. Um, so... Uh, I mean, he's in play just because that's all just because the Warriors and the possibility of him going off for 20 points in one quarter. But um, on the road against the Heats at that price tag, I will take DeMar DeRozan over him just for slightly cheaper. Not a strong night for shooting guard. Um, I mean, if it's not DeMar DeRozan, I think you're paying down. Um, you look at Dwayne Wade, uh, come off a 39-minute game, um, which is huge. So I guess that pretty much says he's healthy. Um, you look at the last time he plays Golden State, it is going to pick up the pace a little bit. Should help him out. He did play 32 minutes in that game, went 20-11 at 7. Um, I think the Golden State pace, I mean, kind of helps the Miami uh, plays, I guess you could say, you know, just due to a tick up and upside. Um, 
because they are playing at a, at a faster pace than usual. So um, guys like Wade, Dang, um, I am curious about Whiteside, who we'll talk about a little bit, but also Drogic um, could benefit just from this matchup in general because it's not usually one that they find themselves in. Uh, Will Barton, Jamal Crawford, both sitting in the same price range. And Jamal Crawford obviously uh, has pretty much a big pitchfork mob heading after him after that last game. 17 minutes, 1.5 DK points, 2 points, 1 turnover uh, against Phoenix, which was just dreadful on a night where what seemed to be everyone took him, myself included. But um, I'm looking for him to bounce back tonight. I mean, I still think he's at a decent price tag. Um, coming off the bench with that, with that high usage. So uh, he's definitely in play for me. But, I mean, you look at Will Barton, who's just 100 more. Barton been much more consistent, um, you know, over the last stretch or so as well. So um, I think Barton's going to be relied on heavily. And ever since Foy left, I mean, 27, 31, and 31 minutes in the last three games. And um, that's a nice number for him to be at for, you know, back when – when Denver was dealing with injuries and Barton was kind of that guy. So I think you're going to see more of that going forward. Etwan Moore, uh, without Jimmy Butler, more of a fan dual value play because he's 4,500 and 5,400 on DK there. But uh, he's averaged 14, 4, and 3 in seven games against or without Jimmy Butler this season. Shooting 58% from three in that span. Obviously, a matchup against the Wizards is very solid. Uh, his usage rate is taking a 2% bump with Butler out. He's saved for 30 plus minutes tonight. Um, uh, Washington's allowed the third most fantasy points per game, two opposing shooting guards in the last 10. Also, they ranked 29th in opponents' three-point percentage. So, Etoile Moore is kind of a sneaky play if you want some Bulls exposure tonight. That's not Gasol or Rose um, or Portis, who we'll talk about. But Etoile Moore is kind of, I mean, he's a decent shot at a punt play who does have upside. So, I do like him in tournaments. Um, FanDuel, definitely not a bad option for value. So, uh, he's definitely in play for me tonight, I think, at, at a pretty weak shooting guard spot. Zach Levine, um, I mean, if you want 25 fantasy points, he seems that's what you're going to get from him night in and night out. Um, tougher matchup, but as you said, I was really surprised with Minnesota against Boston and their backcourt defense uh, the other night, who is you know similar to Toronto. Um, Toronto's got a little bit more length with DeRozan, but... Um, 25 fantasy points. He's playing big minutes, 32, 33, 26, and 38. Um, did put up 27 DK points. I think he's a pretty safe cash game option. I think the the upside's a little bit limited, but uh, definitely in play tonight. Going any cheaper, um, you're kind of you're kind of pushing it. There is an interesting situation with um, well, Lance Stevenson played 22 minutes. There is no Courtney Lee. Um, Tony Allen doesn't expect to play tonight, so did see 22 minutes last game, 24 DraftKings points. He is a shooting guard on um, FanDuel, which is why we're talking about him, but just 3,600, um, 23 fantasy points there. So if you're looking at a punt play, trying to be a little bit different, trying to get some exposure against the Lakers team, him and Vince Carter, I mean, arguably could be decent value plays tonight. I mean, obviously the risk is there because the, flows, the floor is so low, but um, if you're looking for some opportunity, if you're looking for some minutes, those two guys uh, are in play if you're going with that stars and scrubs type lineup or just need to get that extra elite guy in there. Ward over small forward. Uh, Kawhi Leonard's really the only issue we have, and we're not too sure um, about him. Limited in practice yesterday, so I still think he is on the more questionable side. Um, hasn't played in the last two, so really, I mean, that just means uh, – Kyle Anderson is the guy who comes in. Nice matchup for him. Um, it's been a little bit up and down. Had a nice game against the Lakers, but 15 DraftKings points seems to be about where he's at when he fills in. Not really on my radar tonight. Um, I just think I'd rather uh, punt elsewhere, and I think that's with Vince Carter or Lance Stevenson, um, who does better matchup against the Lakers slightly um, and a little bit more consistent playing time otherwise. So. If you look, all the stars are out at small forward tonight. Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Paul George, Carmelo Anthony. Um, Durant and James kind of that priced above um, the, the extra thousand. Uh, still below 10K on DK there, but um, I'm not really too in particular with paying up. I think Durant is my favorite option in this game. 
He's had decent success against Dallas. Um, 26, 5, and 6 over the two games, shooting 54% from the field. So I do like him. As far as LeBron James go, won't have Kid Gilchrist on him this time. So you do like that because, um, you know, he does have 50-plus fantasy point upside, but also when he does have a decent defender on him, you see it a little bit lowered. You see that floor kind of come down just a little bit. Everything comes down. Uh, not a big fan of paying up for him. I'd rather have to rant or I'd rather go down to the George Anthony duo there that's that's going to square off. Um, do you like Paul George coming off a big 58 fantasy point game? Um, definitely big upside. Both these guys just have stupid usage on each other's team. So um, obviously they're going to be squaring off. I think you can do a little GPP narrative of, uh, you know, a, a duo there. So I kind of like that idea, but both are in play for me. Um, I still think I like that mid range. I like Chandler Parsons tonight um, as an, as a nice cash game play. I mean, he's right around that 30 fantasy point range. He's been there against OKC this season. Going to need to score. Um, so I think he's definitely in play for me. Luol Deng, kind of a hot commodity right now in the DFC or DFS industry, and 35, 49, and 53 DK points in the last three games. Uh, playing the power forward spots, like that that matchup here uh, against Golden State, an up tempo game. Not an ideal one on one matchup, but you know what? With Deng's recent production, uh, 18, 18, 17 shot attempts, shooting the ball 60 over 60 percent in two of the three games. Didn't shoot the ball well against Indy, yet still rebounded well. Uh, went 13 and 16, put up 35 fantasy points. He's definitely in play for me tonight. Um, I just think he's in a decent spot against a pretty up-tempo team. Um, the price has come up a little bit, which I'm not too excited about. But, I mean, due to the lack of options in this range, um, you're more than inclined to play uh, pay for it. But love Tobias Harris tonight. I think he's a great play in all formats. Um, you're looking at minutes since he's come over from um, Orlando there, 35, 35, and 30. No Anthony Tolliver. Um, so he's playing the four playing bigger minutes, and he's averaging 14 shot attempts in three games um, with with Detroit. So you kind of like that. You like the safety immense as far as Orlando goes. There's never any safety, as we saw with Brandon Jennings last night. But um, Tobias Harris definitely a play for me tonight against a bad Philly team. At that price, I mean, you really think 30, 35 fantasy points is a great range for him. So um, he's definitely one of my favorite small forward targets tonight. Going cheaper, I mentioned the Memphis duo, but also Matt Barnes is kind of that option who's a safer minutes guy, 33-31 the last two games. Tough matchup against Toronto, uh, 15 points, but the game against Minnesota uh, put up 26. Definitely an easier matchup against L.A. tonight. So um, if you kind of need that safer cash game option, um, you're kind of going more balanced. Barnes is definitely in play because if you're looking below, not a lot lower. Um you're going with, I mean, basically guys like Kyle Anderson um, and the Memphis duo. Um, I'm sure someone will take some Doug, uh, Doug McDermott tonight, some Dougie McBuckets uh, shares against the bad Washington team, but hoping for that, that huge, you know, hot streak you can get on and that we've seen a couple times this season, but um, not much at small four below this price. More to power forward. Um, you're looking at guys, obviously, Chris Bosch has been out, been ruled out. We've seen Dang play more at the four. Um, so he's off the table, but uh, not a lot of injuries. Nikola Miritich still out. We've seen Bobby Portis play some bigger minutes. So we'll talk about him. Uh, been really consistent of late. If you look at minutes, he's been right around that 25 mark um, over the last five, six, seven games or so, I guess you could say. So, um, I mean, he's been producing, I mean, 30, 22, 28, 28 uh, in the last four games and shooting the ball well. Um, obviously a big rebounder, 7, 8, 10, and 10 over the last four. Like the matchup against Washington, they're not a good rebounding team. They're like dead last in the league. Um, I mean, they just struggle to defend on all points. So coming off a of back-to-back, I like Portis, especially if Pau Gasol sits tonight, um, who is a game time decision with an illness? Portis would see a bump. Gibson would see a bump. So you do like those two, especially if Gasol sits. But Portis at that price tag, not a bad play tonight. Um, depending on the side, Demarcus Cousins not paying up for him tonight against the Spurs. Uh, just a tough matchup. Sure, he might go for 45, 50 points, but not worth that price. Um, I'll just go for cheaper production there. But looking at other options, Kevin Love, Lamarcus Aldridge, kind of my favorite plays. 
uh, of the night in that 7K range. Great matchups on for both of them. Um, both teams, both opposing teams, Charlotte and uh, Sacramento, rank in the bottom 10 against power forwards. So pretty safe options on both those. Also love Zebo, Zach Randolph. Um, been really consistent with Marcus Saul out, and obviously the minutes and usage up with him gone. So um, you should look right around 34, 35 minutes tonight. And against a Lakers team that fails to rebound, they rank 27th. They fail to defend uh, anything at that price tag. You gotta like Zebo tonight. Do like the opposite side of that game and Julius Randle. Um, Kind of a sneaky play tonight, coming off a dud game after some really consistent production. Uh, you didn't expect him to really struggle against Milwaukee, but he did. Um, but um, a Memphis matchup is pretty solid. Uh, back when he was in the doghouse with Byron Scott, he just played 23 minutes, but went 9-13 and against Memphis. Um, Memphis, not a good rebounding team. They were 23rd. They're expected to drop a little bit, uh, even with Gasol out. So um, they're just pretty average defensively in that front court. You do like Randall at that price, especially with no one going to be on to him. Um, so he's a pretty pretty decent contrarian move tonight. But, uh, Miles Turner finally moved over from center to power forward on DK. Maybe it has been for a couple of games, but uh, been really consistent as well lately. Nice matchup against New York. Average rebounding team. They've struggled against power forwards of late. Um, I do like Turner uh, in his consistency. Always a little bit of a risk with foul trouble with him at times, but I mean, basically 25 to 35 fantasy points with that upside is his kind of range there. So I do like him a lot tonight uh, in a decent matchup. Going lower, uh, Taj Gibson would kind of determine if Pau Gasol sits. So um, I do like him. Talked about Bobby Portis. Uh, other than that, you're not going too much lower tonight. Um, I think Miles Turner. Uh, is about as low as you go, especially with what Tristan Thompson did the other night uh, after some, you know, really nice nice games, uh, game lucks there and and decent against tougher matchups. Goes up against Detroit uh, and plays 21 minutes with nine DK points. So um, I won't be hopping on that train anytime soon. I think Miles Turner is kind of that safer option for me tonight. Moving over to center, and it's pretty stacked. Um, you look at Pau Gasol, he is Game time decision. Talked about Taj Gibson. Porter's getting a bump, but uh, we'll just start up with top. Carl Anthony Towns, I mean, just having a monster, monster stretch here. And I love the production he's been bringing. Um, he scored 50 plus DK points in five of the last 10 games, um, including a game against Toronto, who he's playing tonight. He's averaging 22, 12, and 2 on that span, blocking over two shots a game. Um, Toronto's just been horrendous against centers of late. Uh, they're allowing an average of 61 DK points to opposing centers. Um, combination of centers in the last 10 games. So, um, I mean, the usage is up 26.4 in the last 10 games. A lot of enticing options, but he's just definitely in play for me. And I think maybe he gets overlooked tonight just because he is a higher price guy. Drummond plays against Philly. That's an obvious matchup tonight. DeAndre Jordan against a weak Denver front court. Even Hassan Whiteside's going to get some looks. And I'm a little bit concerned for Hassan Whiteside tonight. Um, yes, back-to-back 50-point games, monster rebounding games, 19 and 18, six blocks, 25 and 23 the game before that. Golden State goes slow or goes small. Um, I'm curious to see how that's handled. I mean, we've seen Whiteside put up big production in, in limited times. We've seen put up a freaking triple-double in like 20 minutes with blocks. But um, – I mean, it is it is a little bit concerning if Golden State goes small and you're playing Draymond Green at the five. Uh, I don't see Whiteside lasting that long, but they do have a lack of depth down there, so I am curious to see how that plays out. But there is some legitimate risk there with that. Looking at other options, Marcin Gortat coming off a big game, 21-11. Really nice matchup against Chicago tonight. I like that. Um, always seems to consistently be around that 30-minute mark, so he's pretty safe there. Really consistent cash gameplay, like his price on DK, uh, 43, 36, 32, and 49 the last four games, 30, 32 before that. So, been solid before the break, been solid after the break, definitely in play for me. As far as the other guys go, Nikola Djokic, uh, definitely a GPP play. Um, if you played him last night, 43 minutes, or uh, sorry, 43 DK points in just 20 minutes, um, that's the kind of player he's been, but uh, personal fouls have just been an issue for him. Uh, five, four, and four in the last two games, three games there. Um, 
should be playing against a, a heavier DeAndre Jordan, who's not really crafty, but Jokic just has to be smart out there. Um, I do like him tonight because LA has struggled against centers, but definitely just a GPP play. I would never touch him in cash ever, ever, ever. So um, look at him tonight. But outside of that, I mean, you're looking at Drummond Towns, Gasol, if he plays Jordan as decent options tonight. Love Gortat, Whiteside GPP only, uh, Jokic GPP only. So, um, it is a low tonight, but there are plenty of options to deal with, and you can kind of mix and match, which is always fun. So that's going to wrap things up here with the Mints to win it. Check out dailyfantasycafe.com for all our great tools and content.